In this section, I'm going to demonstrate another additional flexibility for this custom grouping, especially the, the ability to distinguish the behavior between the pre-processing, the calibration side of WBPP, and the other side, which is the image registration and image integration, kind of the post-processing after you've done the calibration. And I think that that point is made really clear, of course, if you're doing something like this, which is a a mosaic. In this case, it's a mosaic of just two panels. I'm going to call them a panel so I don't say the word frame. You'll see why in a moment. Uh, but let's say we have a panel here on the left and we have another panel here on the right and together they make up my field of view. This is something that um, I didn't have the ability to do before, but now and, uh, and subsequently I'll be able to do this, I could have calibrated all of the data for this particular set of two panels at one time calibrate everything and then have WBPP output integrated images for each master lights if you will for each of the panels that's spectacular to be able to do that and I'm going to demonstrate how that is let me first show you the data that I'm working with here the image that you saw there on the screen was part of the Taurus molecular cloud and so I have two folders here Taurus MC and Taurus MC East those are my two panels if you look actually within at the raw data here's what the raw data looks like I have some calibration data but here's the raw data um, it says TMC it says a date so I actually do have dates associated with these file names. Um, and they're all just in this directory. Uh, in the other directory, same kind of thing, the other panel. What you'll notice is that I didn't actually distinguish in the file names. The only way I know which panel I am is because of the directories that they happen to be in when I um, acquired the data. So that's where the information resides. Now, if I'm going to later distinguish for post-processing, for the registration and image integration, I need a keyword. I don't have a keyword here that distinguishes. So I'm gonna make one. And my keyword, I'm gonna say, is gonna be panel. And uh, what should we call this? One, I mean, yeah, let's just call it one. So I'm gonna call this panel one, and then we'll make the other one panel two. I'm really not very creative when it comes to this. Okay, so panel is the keyword, and then the value is one or two, and that's gonna distinguish between these two data sets. So let's uh, load some of these data. So we go to here, here. These are the raw data here. This will include some darks, and biases, and flats. What is somewhat important though, is I only have one set of biases one set of uh, darks and one set of flats. So in this particular data set, unlike a previous one that I demonstrated, um, all of the data, regardless of which panel on which night, they're all being calibrated by the same calibration data uh, across any night, any time, any panel. So in that sense, I'm not going to be using a keyword to distinguish between any of those things. I could, but I don't need to in this case. The only place I need to make that distinction is between the two panels themselves. So I need to load the other panels information, panel two. That's the other raw data. Here it is. It's in here. This is a lot of data. So that should have gotten loaded in here. Lots and lots of data. Okay, so looking at the control panel right now, this actually should read correctly for calibration purposes. It's as I described. I want to calibrate this data with these calibration uh, files, with these flats, darks, and biases. Now, um, if you haven't seen uh, the way that I do my thing with the, the CCD camera that I use, does not require me for short flat exposures to match with um, the same um, exposure times for darks. I can just use a bias with this camera. So all I need to do here is you'll see there's that little warning sign. It is telling me that there is no matching dark frame, which is true because I didn't take it. And you will know by watching my other videos what to do. You need to turn off or deselect the dark here. We're not trying to automatically match with the dark. And that means it's going to be 
uh, using the bias. Uh, but let me show you here that that suggestion is made right here in the warning. It says you can disable the master dark and subtract the bias. That is a very good idea if you don't have a matching dark. So I will just do that. And then this data is ready to be calibrated. So in the past, that's the best that I could do. But now I can do something even better. See, in the past, it wouldn't make sense for me now to go here and do generate um, an image, do image registration and then image integration, because that is going to potentially do, you know, all of those frames, the blues across both panels. That doesn't make sense. So what we need to do is first add our keyword, which is panel, add it here. And it does not make sense for calibration purposes. This is now actually applying that for calibration purposes, although I don't think it's gonna matter because it's the same things. But what we need to do is instead put it on the post side because it's how it's going to be, the image integration is going to unfold. That is where it's important. Notice one more thing, when you change here your uh, keyword um, uh, state, you may need to remember to, so you need to get into the proper state really before you go messing around with these uh, matches and so on. So I'm gonna just redo that here. Okay, so now I'm in the proper state and what we're going to see is if I do the post process, now we're going to see that I'll be getting an integrated image, a master light in blue for each panel. If I did not have this keyword checked, it would just be all the blues together. It wouldn't distinguish between the panels. So you'll see here I have two blues, one for the panel one and one for panel two. Two greens, one for panel one, one for panel two. This is what we need to assemble a mosaic. And it's just incredible because now I could do everything in one go. That is just so cool. So that now works, but there is one more important but, and that is that when it comes to image registration, it's going to be important to register only within one of the panels because we couldn't pick a frame automatically or manually, a single frame, and use that to uh, register both panels of information uh, because panel one is not gonna align with panel two. They're two separate pieces of sky. Go to the lights then, and because we have a keyword that has a post method, a post processing uh, a check mark by it, then when we go to, and I have to turn this on, when we go to turn these things on, because we're gonna do it, you'll see the mode here will now allow us to register a reference frame that it automatically picks um, by group, or in this case, it's going to be, yeah, by keyword, by group, but the group is the panel. So it's going to pick a, regist uh, yeah, a registration reference in panel one, and a different one, of course, because it's a different set of uh, images in panel two, which is what we need. If this had not been, I'm gonna now change it, oh, change, like this, or even this, I won't have that option here for the keyword because the keyword is not, this is a post, processing thing to do is to change that registration, that reference image uh, for registration purposes. It needs to be on the post section. And then you'll have that option to do automatic by keyword, automatic in this case by panel. So that's how you, you go about doing, in, this is just one particular configuration as far as a mosaic is concerned. Let me show you one more element here which is, let's say that I had the even more, I don't have this currently, but let's say I had the even more complicated thing, which is not only did I need to group post-processing by panel, but I also needed to group pre-processing by night. I don't have to do that, but I wanna show you one more configuration just to show you the ultimate flexibility of this keyword process. Of course, you can have more than one keyword. And let me just point out that if you, look at my lights here, you'll see that all of the lights, they all start with TMC. And then I have a date. I actually have a value outside of the object name. 
So if I made, let's say this is true, let's say I had flats for each night and I, you know, I, I had this um, value here for each night, January 10, January 11th, and I had the TMC associated with each flat night, right? So I could still use the keyword TMC if it was in my flats, and then I had these values in the flats, I could have done this trick, which is add TMC here, Okay, wait a second. Notice that I don't have the plus sign here. That's because I have to I have to deselect the panel here because otherwise I can change the name. Maybe I should demonstrate this. You can change the name of a keyword just by uh, changing this to something else, you know, whatever, and then you'll change the name of the keyword. That's how that works, but it needs to be panel here like that. So if you want that plus sign to show up, make sure that you're not highlighting the keyword. And, oh, I have to specify TMC. There we go. Now you'll find, because we have TMC here, we are grouping by the value, which is the date. So you can see all the dates here. These values are now being grouped by that. So in the control panel, let's make this a little bit larger. You can see here that TMC it, for the light frames anyway, is being grouped by these date values. Now, I don't have those values on my flats. If I did, they would match. And I would be able to then not only do the calibration um, matching on particular nights, whatever panel I might have been working on, but then, of course, for the post-processing, I would be able to still integrate per panel. Uh, to produce just the red, the green, and the blue integrated images having been calibrate, uh, calibrated, grouped in a different way because I have two different keywords. Really flexible stuff, and you can imagine uh, any number of um, configurations to support very different kinds of image acquisition that might require one kind of logic for the pre-processing and a different kind of logic uh, for the post-processing where you're doing the registration and the uh, image integration. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, kind of really brief introduction to the grouping keywords and the pre-process and post-process uh, distinguishing behavior here when using keywords to control it.